Welcome to part two of our videos on JavaScript variables. Let's start off by part two by reviewing a couple of things. Now I wrote this out in my summary here and I'm just going to read and comment on a few things and then we'll get back into code quickly. So we know that variables are virtual containers to hold information and you know that we need to create variables to hold information because for anything to happen on a computer really it has to be placed into memory and you remember memory is RAM that's why when you buy more memory for your computer the computer runs faster because it's able to stick stuff in memory and the more stuff in memory the faster it goes you see in the old days with more primitive programming languages a programmer had to manually stick the information the data into specific spots in memory this is a long and tedious process that brings a whole new meaning to hyper anal nerd. Okay, that was badly de delivered, but you have to understand programming was really a much more geeky thing in the past when you didn't have the ability to create variables on the fly as you can with uh, JavaScript. So you got to understand when you use the var keyword in JavaScript, basically you're automating the process. Variables automate the process for you. You just create the variable and stick information in it. JavaScript takes care of all the dirty details. And of course, to create a variable in JavaScript, you need to use the keyword var followed by the name you want to give it. So uh, let's jump back into some code. So we've seen this before. So let's look at a few things. Now, you notice here in my examples, let me just organize this code a little bit better. I created the variables first, and then down here, I assigned them. Now, this is like a very old school way well it's not an old school way this is kind of an encumbering way of doing it you could actually just do this you can declare a variable and when you use the var keyword and you give it a name that's you create a variable near it's called that declaring a variable so when you declare a variable you can do it at the same time as you give it a value so let's go uh, first name here and last name of course so you see I've minimized the amount of code we needed and just to make sure everything works fine we reload when we see that, that alert pop up as we did here we know our codes working pretty good another reason why we know our code is working pretty good let me just remove that we're gonna if I bang boom into the explorer displays our error for us okay and we get no alert box because the uh, code screwed up along the way right so we'll put that back in everything should work fine there we go so to get back to it as you can see you can declare a variable and declaring a variable just basically means use the var keyword and add a name for the variable and you can give it a value on one line you don't have to do it on two lines as I did before let's look at variable names now you notice when I created a variable I didn't have a space like this I can't have var first name because as far as JavaScript is concerned this space makes it uh, well it screws it up we'll just reload this we got our error again right and well let's just look at that error a little bit more closely so, see uh, line 14 character 11 error expected semicolon so let me look at that again you see when you have a space line 14 it's expecting a semicolon here because when you have a space that tells JavaScript figures you're starting something new it could be declaring another variable or whatnot so it's expecting this but the fact of the matter is what you should take away from this is that you don't want a space in your variable names it has to be either touching no space or you can use something like an underscore that works too variables can have uh, lowercase and uppercase this all works but what I would suggest you keep it all lowercase you can start very you can start variables with uh, text and you can start it out with no numbers see that's not going to work JavaScript doesn't want numbers for the beginning of a variable so we'll just uh, refresh that again Bing. see line 14 character 5 line 14 character 1 2 3 4 5 see it doesn't like that no numbers to begin your variables you probably can do this see you can put a number 
in after the first letter, but your first letter of your variable names have to be text. Okay, it can't be numbers, it can't be special symbol. Well, I guess it could be a dollar sign. It can't be that symbol. It can't be this symbol. Just to be safe, when you create a variable, just make sure it starts with a letter. Make sure there's no spaces in between them and no special weird characters because that will cause problems as well. So, uh, yeah, if you want to create spaces between your variable names, like first names, so it's clear, you can put an underscore and away you go. Yes, these are nerdy details, I know, but I'm trying to make your life easier. Another thing you can do, you notice I put them on separate lines. You can put them all on one line if you want to. A little harder to read. Let's see where this launch this. Oh, we got a problem. First name undefined. Let's go OK. Ah, it's because the alert, see the alert is looking for first name without an underscore, right? And because I put in an underscore, this is now a different variable name than this. So to solve that error that we were having before, let's go first name. Let's see, make sure last name, last name, okay. Let's uh, save that, reload, rock and roll. All right, so you notice how I was able to declare the variables all in one line. Now it's important that I have the semicolon after each variable creation or declaration. Makes no difference. Now, see, I don't need to have a space. I can have it all squished up because when JavaScript sees the semicolon, that's like a period, so it knows that we're starting a new statement when after the period. Remember, each of these things, each of these lines is considered a statement. So that's where these semicolons come in. Now, this is cool, having it all on one line because it saves space, but it can get hard to read. So I recommend when you create your variables, you put them on separate lines like this. It's much cleaner, easier to read. There's a a lot about variables I'm not going to cover in this first video because my goal is to get moving along as quickly as possible. So one last thing that we can do is we can actually add variables together. You notice we did it down here in the alert, but we can actually do it up here. So we can go number, now nah, let's go, oops, let me go, we'll say the last name is equal to first name plus number. Let's see what happens there. There it worked. See? Nick and Nick six. How did that happen? So you go, the alert is basically printing out whatever value we have stored in these variables. We have the variable first name. We added a space so it's nice and clear, and we have the variable last name. So we know last name is uh, Mischuk, and we know the first name is, uh, uh, well, we know the last name was Mischuk, and, uh, but when we loaded our script here, it says Nick and Nick 6, see? That's the, first, that's the second variable, Nick 6, right? Second variable, last name. So why is, we declared the variable last name to have the value, to hold the value of Mischuk, but for some reason it came out as Nick6. Why? Because we changed it here. We said, now let's take the last name variable and let's actually put in the values, the first name, first name is Nick, plus the whatever value is being held in the variable number, which was 6, right? That's why we had Nick6. Let's see if we change this to 22. And let's refresh that. Nick, Nick 22, or we could change it to some text. Again, if you recall, to make it text in JavaScript, we need to put the text in between uh, quotes like this. So let's, uh, let's preview that. Nick and Nick Jimmy Fish. So we learned something new now. We just learned that we can actually replace information about in variables with other information. This type of stuff comes in really handy when we're getting deeper into JavaScript. There's a lot more about JavaScript variables that we could get into, but we have enough now, more than enough now, to be able to proceed with our other practical JavaScript lessons. So uh, we'll get back to variables at a later time.